Here you go. So simply Here we inhale. Go. Well, that's great, it even matches your outfit. Perfect. Holy shit, that's tasty. It's so good. You might want a rosin more of your flowers. That was truly the essence of that flower. Oh, man. Hey everybody, welcome to High Rollers. I'm your host, Derek Gilman, and together we're going to explore the world of cannabis connoisseurship. The tools, the techniques, the details to help you maximize the enjoyment of your cannabis consumption experience. Today, we are going to crawl into the art of the high-end pre-roll. Joining us today is Ali Butler, the founder of Hepburns, an uber high-end exclusive pre-roll company out of San Francisco. Welcome to High Rollers, Allie. Hi, Derek. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Hey, we're going to have a lot of fun today. Definitely. Um, you have brought a lot of fun, cool, neat items for us to crawl into. Certainly. And uh, before we start to share all of that magical goodness that you brought, mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to start out with you know, what inspired you to get into the cannabis industry? What inspired you to start this beautiful pre-roll company of yours? Well, I was raised in Berkeley um, by um, great parents, uh, one of whom was a mom who smoked herb. Okay. And uh, Berkeley I, is good training ground, I imagine. It certainly is. <laughs> it certainly is. Um, in the junior league of uh, cannabis smokers, so to speak. <laughs> um, so it was definitely a good place to learn about that. Um, I uh, went to UCLA, I went to NYU for grad school. Um, my mom got sick when I was in grad, grad school for public health. Um, she had uh, COPD and emphysema. She had been a cigarette smoker also, and I was, um, uh, really grateful to get the opportunity to grow just a couple plants for her, um, okay. turn the material into lollipops, that kind of thing. So it started and out looking to help your mom? Yeah, I was trying to help my mom. Um, I went and worked in the cannabis industry after she passed away, and what I found was that there was a really big need for um, better products that were more accessible to people. Um, better products? Yeah. Because um, you were working, you worked at Spark, you worked at Apothecarium. I did, yeah. So, I mean, so you have some experience, you know, on the front lines, yeah. get to see what was flowing through some of the better dispensaries, Certainly. you know, on the West Coast. I was a bud tender uh, to start at Apothecarium for a few years, and um, I found people were coming in looking for something stronger, more consistent um, than what was currently available on the market, and I wanted to give them something that uh, I would want to smoke. The idea of a pre-roll sounds a little bit stale to me. I like the idea of a joint, and I know that we're legally supposed to call them pre-rolls, but Ideally, it should be a joint. And, and there's a lot of variables that go into the pre-rolls that ultimately determine the quality of the pre-roll. And in my experience, the bulk of the pre-rolls out on the market, they're weak. Yes. Okay, they're either made from some sort of, you know, leftover trim, you know, that, that happens through the processing of the flowers or the second quality flowers. Yes, and one of my favorite variables is also um, solventless ice water hash. So I love full melt, um, I love trichomes, um, I love cannabis resin, and I wanted to find a way to teach more people about it and to get more people enjoying it. 
because I think it's a really awesome way to enjoy the cannabis plant, especially sprinkling a, sprinkling a little bit of properly dried ice water hash in a, a fire joint, you uh, will be happy. So. Very cool, let's back up a little. How exactly did you go about, uh, yeah, I can see you're getting anxious there. Me too, don't worry, this is gonna happen, <laughs> Allie, okay? <laughs> Yeah, Allie was dabbing before we even started filming here, okay? That's <laughs> warming up, so to speak. <laughs> um, tell us about how you launched this company. What were, what were, the, what were the steps? When did you launch uh, Hepburns? Um, well, uh, I guess officially in January of 2015. Okay. Um, and... I, I started this company uh, with a small um, friends and family effort, and it's something that's really a labor of love, and it remains a friends and family type of effort. Um, it's something that is small, that has a lot of potential for growth, um, but that what we're really trying to um, keep at the heart of it is the heart, and that's something that's really good, some really great cannabis, some really great hash. What goes into a high-end pre-roll? What separates your pre-rolls from nearly everything else that's out there? What goes into my pre-rolls, what, what goes into Hepburns are um, my favorite flowers. So curated, um, proper quality, really good cannabis um, flowers. Um, now, are you, do you so. exclusively use sun-grown or do you use indoor-grown uh, as well? And this year I used all sun-grown and I was really, really happy with it. Yeah. Um, I featured a lot of flowers from regenerative farmers and I was really, really pleased with the overall effect and the result in the world. So I think um, that's something that I'm going to work really hard to continue to um, make sure that sure. it happens. Um, you know, and really good hash is another really important part of that. So, what does really good hash mean to you? If you mentioned the ice water extraction for starters, properly, um, properly extracted trichome. So, uh, beautifully grown trichome, something that has been the given the right amount of time to mature, all of the right inputs, um, is really clean, has been cleanly extracted, um, usually washed, and then always properly dried. Um, which is a really, really important part of the whole process. So the entire process for Hepburns is done um, with artisan input by humans. So these are all hand packed with love. And you guys have two different types of pre-rolls now. Yes. Right? Tell we us have, what you brought here today. We have our Hepburns Petites, which are our hand rolled little ice water hash joints. These are little minis. Yes. They are petite, aren't they? They are petite, yeah. Um, they're delicious. They're small, but they are heavy hitters. Pull a dry hit off one of these rascals. Yeah, please, go ahead. And we also have our deluxes, which is a little bit more my size. They're hand-rolled glass-tipped fatties. Um, it is very tasty. Mm -hmm. um, so with your petites, they come in this neat little container here that I see has this... Uh, it looks to be a, uh, an Alice in Wonderland mm -hmm. kind of theme you got going on there. We're really trying to capture the magic or inspire people to, to feel their own magic. And I think that's what um, brings people, draws people towards this product and then brings them back as they find that it's really, really good on the inside and it makes them feel the way that they are looking to feel. It's the hookah um, smoking caterpillar, man. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. I love it. And so with the petites, I see you have these paper Mm -hmm. filters in here. Correct. I see with your Deluxe you have a glass filter. Correct. Uh, these are hand blown by Jolly Green Glass, um, who is a local glass artist. These are Hepburns exclusive. They're amethyst, so they're color changing um, if you look at them under um, regular light or CFL, so yeah. compact fluorescent light. Approximately how much flour and how much hash is in that, approximately. What we're looking for is a ratio that's like, where it's not laden too heavily with ice water hash, but where you get um, to enjoy the experience in every drag. Um, and I also incorporate the ice water hash because it helps with the aerodynamics of how the herb and the air and the heat and the flame all work to make a properly make burning joint. Um, because if you put too much hash in, what'll happen? Well, it, it could run, it could, you know, just sit there and make a hash cherry and you could just get really, really stoned and then the, your aerodynamics would be off. It doesn't um, work the same. Yeah, this it helps to reduce any potential for wasted product. Um, and it helps you to get your 
fullest experience. Um, and one thing that's really important about the way that we make these is uh, we pair um, the terpenes and the cannabinoids. So um, like I would put red dragon hash with a uh, Girl Scout cookies flour or something like that. So you get the sort of euphoric, um, very creative high on top of the body relief um, to pair the flavors and the effects that people want to get. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, now I'm ready to smoke. Okay, great. <laughs> uh, I, I'm intrigued with that glass tip. Okay, great. Actually. Yeah, me too. Sarah, I'll lean over for you. I'm getting this wonderful kind of incense type of aroma mm -hmm. off this. Tell us what's in this one here. That is the Jack. The Jack. Mm -hmm. And it's from one of my favorite uh, cultivations in San Francisco. It's called Profit, and that's outdoor grown, sun grown cannabis. This is very tasty. I'm just gonna make sure we get a good light on this here. So the deluxes can have a tendency to overwhelm people. Um, I think we should be okay, but... Not us, we're pros, Allie, right? Yeah, you can knock out a whole wedding party if you're not careful, no, I'm kidding. Um, Sounds like there's a story there. Did you, have you knocked out wedding parties before with, with your deluxe? Just, um, my friend smoked one with a, a, a couple that was about to get married, and I believe they were unable to complete their wedding preparations on the particular evening, at least. Get out of here. <laughs> How did you come up with the exact concept that you know that you wanted a, a glass tip, that you wanted a certain kind of flower? How did you go about this process? I really didn't like the idea of having a paper tip on the deluxe joints because um, there is so much resin at the end of this and you can get just like, a, if, if you smoked like a, three gram joint with a little bit of paper or something like that. At the end, um, you, you would have a lot of potential wasted resin. It just this. starts gooping up, yeah. clogging up, mm -hmm. right? You can, we'll, I'll show you, you can like pull the glass part a little bit away from the herb and it helps to improve the airflow as it gets more and more resonated. Just like that. Okay, you can, you can back it out a little bit but they're rolled properly so they shouldn't come off the glass tip. It's all good. Now, are these uh, all rolled by hand? Are they rolled by machine? These are all hand prepared with love. <laughs> I love it. Um, and could you show us, you know, for people, you know, who want to roll with glass tips or some sort of tip and maybe haven't before, uh, do you have maybe a little special technique that you can show kind of how you go about you know, doing this? Mm -hmm. So. Get one of your favorite rolling papers and get one of your favorite glass tips or whatever tip you'd like. Um, what I do is I place the glass tip in the paper and I angle the paper just a little bit. I pull the paper tightly around the glass tip, producing a cone. Now this is really great because you can make these on a beach or wherever, you know, yeah. it's, it's windproof. Um, I guess the trick yeah, is yeah. I see you. I see you keeping a really tight hold yep. on that end that has the tip and the paper. And what I'm usually looking for is a place to put as much great cannabis as possible. Nice. And a solid seal. So you make that little cone, and mm -hmm. then it's ready to be filled up. Yep. You have a kind of unique consumption regimen. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I find it unique, yeah. <laughs> I think it is. And, uh, and you make these wonderful hash-infused pre-rolls. Mm -hmm. uh, and you tend to smoke a joint. 
right? Because, yep. you know, I'm sorry, you don't call them free rolls. Or two joints. Or two joints. <laughs> but there's something you like to do after you smoke the joints. Mm -hmm. What is that? What is this unique regimen that I'm, uh, I'm leading us into here? Well, I mean, I love dabbing. Um, AKA the fractional vaporization of uh, ideally solventless concentrates. Um, fractural? Fractional vaporization. So, um, what does that mean? Uh, vaporizing these concentrates basically on something like this. What is this? This is a quartz nail. So, we heat this up and then we let it cool back down and um, there will be different temperatures occurring. That's why there are different fractions of vaporization. Gotcha. I think. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that might be uh, but uh, basically, you're, you're melting I, whatever product it is on here. Dabbing is one of my favorite ways to consume cannabis. Um, what I like about it is that you can uh, safely vaporize your cannabis. Okay. Um, and what I love about this type of a setup is that while it's a little bit ostentatious, um, it's definitely something that I trust. Um, this is a quartz nail. Um, I heat it up. I put product that I trust in there. I let it cool down until it's the proper temperature and then I consume it. So one of the things I love about cannabis connoisseurship mm -hmm are the tools that people use. Mm -hmm. And here is, an, is, is a prime example of an opportunity to really kind of personalize your experience. Yeah. You know, you found this little rig, you know, that, that spoke to you, right? Yes, you can support your favorite glass artists, which is something that I find that's really important. Yeah. Um, I love glass art. Um, so this is an Arco glass piece, who's an artist who's local to Oakland and Berkeley in California. And- um, All right. Can I see? Yeah, totally. Looks like it's got a little opal in there. Yep, a grandpa glass opal, just like in this carb cap. Oh, this thing's sweet. This thing is sweet. She chugs. Uh, yeah, so you, uh, so you smoke a joint or two, mm -hmm. and then you like to dab afterwards. Yep, and then I do as many dabs as I, as I need to do until I get where I am looking to get. And now there's lots of different uh, lots of different things that can be dabbed these days. Mm -hmm. You know, there's BHO. There's there's various concentrates. Mm -hmm. Which is your concentrate of choice? Um, my favorites would be ice water hash and rosin. Okay. And I made some rosin um, of your. It was the lime pop ghost OG cross, right? We did. We so, did. Okay, yeah, I yeah. Knowing right. that Allie was going to want to do some uh, some rosin dabbing, uh, we pressed some of my Ghost OG Lime Pop mm -hmm. and uh, made some pretty special stuff here. So uh, why, don't you, uh, why don't you show us okay, what will. you made? I will. We pressed this on some dioxin-free parchment paper. It wasn't a huge yielder, but she is beautiful. You, you took some of my nug, right. you put it in between that parchment paper there, right. you stuck it into this machine, you then proceeded to stand on top of this thing. Just for maybe about 20 seconds, put a little bit of heat and pressure. But I watched you lean into it, and, uh, and then afterwards we had this, this wonderful sap, mm -hmm. right, that had, that, had, that had come out. Uh, you've now scraped it all off the paper there, but it made these wonderful rings of this sap. And uh, now we're going to smoke this stuff, huh? Mm -hmm. Let's see. Let's use the Halen bucket. And I had three different flowers of mine to choose from, Allie. I had this piña mm -hmm. that's this nice, clear-headed, conversational, yep. kind of up high. Yep. I had some of this Skittles do -si do Skittles back cross, which I feel is pretty balanced. Mm -hmm. And then I had that the Ghost OG Lime Pop, which is what she went for, <laughs> which happens to be my hammer. Well, <laughs> it smells like morning weed to me, Derek. <laughs> why, I want to know why it spoke to you. What, what, what was it about the, uh, the Ghost OG Lime Pop? Terpy AF. <laughs> uh, she just like it smells like um super citrusy super refreshing yeah um and i feel like uh that lime terp is or that whatever the lime set of terpenes is really really excellent for uh rosin it doesn't tend to 
escape as much. So you want to try this? Uh, why don't you go first and okay. show me? Okay. Let, let's pretend I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. So um, I heated the nail up, and then I'm waiting for it to cool back down. And I'm doing what I call the baby bottle tech. A lot of people do much more scientific things. But basically, the wrist is the, one of the most sensitive parts of the body. And if you're heating up a baby's bottle, um, you can use your wrist to see if the milk might be too warm for yes. the baby. Um, and you don't want to burn your throat. So you want to be careful with that in the same way that you would with a baby's bottle. Um, and what do you and what do you wait till? Uh... Just till it feels nice. And okay. different resins are um, better consumed at different temperatures. I feel like this one will be best at really nice low temp. You said you thought this one would probably work best at a low temp. Because it's really good. There are a lot of really delicious volatile terpenes. Um, so you know, in the same way that it's a delicious flower that we can smell across the room. Um, I pressed it at a low temperature to try to preserve as many of them so that now we can enjoy as many of them as possible. And you just recognize that terp you know, that profile, you know, you stuck your nose in the jar here and it just, you could tell that it was layered. Yeah. I was like, damn, Derek grows some good weed. <laughs> Thank you, Allie. I'm going to have a drink of water. Yeah, always, you know, if you're not 100% familiar with dabbing, make sure that you take a very small dab at a low temperature. Uh, make sure you're hydrated and chilled out and make sure that um, you're sitting down. So. Set I had dab before for what it's worth. Okay. Uh, and I'm very excited. Uh, as soon as you told me you were bringing this rosin press in, uh, I knew I was going to bring my, some of my flour down here and. Uh, and look forward to tasting it. I haven't tasted any of mine in, uh, in concentrate form. I think you'll really love this. I love that it's something that you can try, you know, with just a small quantity of flour, you know? Mm -hmm. We pressed maybe a gram and a half. And there's no solvents. There's no solvents. You know, you know exactly what all the inputs are into this. You literally just press the sap right out of the flour. Correct. And then moments later, it's ready to be smoked. Correct. And I'm going to make yours just a little bit smaller than mine. Oh, I'm excited. What purpose does the carb cap serve? Uh, creates a vacuum. And this is a bubble cap, so it goes in there, creates a vacuum when you're inhaling, and I, it turns and that helps to move the oil around in the bottom of the nail. Maximizes the efficiency of the hit. Certainly. You want to get everything that you pay for, right? Yeah. So, here you go. So simply Here inhale. Well, that's great, it even matches your outfit. Perfect. Holy shit, that's tasty. It's so good. You might want a rosin more of your flowers. That was truly the essence of that flower. Yep. Oh, man. That was really, really, really good. Mmm. It's particularly wow. nice when it's enjoyed fresh. You know, you have really great flower. You press it, um, and you just get the entire experience. So. The effects compared to smoking flower. What should I expect now? Again, this is typically my hammer. Mm -hmm. You my should nighttime. expect the exact same effect that you get from that. The essence of this is the same thing. For me, it's just a little bit more immediate. Mm -hmm. um, and I can feel it getting on top of me. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> um, I, I love it. I just like sometimes um, not having to consume as much plant material mm -hmm. because I love smoking joints. Um, yeah, I find that part intriguing, the, the, the fact that it is just the sap of the plant mm -hmm. and there's no plant material. Mm -hmm. um, I certainly mean it seems nice and clean, very intense, mm -hmm. nice high. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to pre-dab for this episode. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> Thank you.
I don't know, I really like having options. Um, for me, I'm somebody who tries to use cannabis uh, as my main alternative medicine healing modality. So I use edibles, I use topicals every single day, um, and I basically try to consume the right quantity for myself of each of these items. Um, and so having different options is really good. Um, I have back pain, so that's okay. part of why I use cannabis. I have um, spina bifida occulta and scoliosis, so okay. basically a birth defect to do with my spine, and um, AKA a great reason to have a lifetime weed card. Sure, <laughs> and, and a great reason to be smoking uh, around the clock. Exactly, so while others might use different types of medications, I use cannabis, and something like this can deliver immediate relief for me. So if you, let's say, were really wound up after a long day, you felt like you had a lot of energy, but you knew you needed to sleep, you might be able to take a, a small um, vapor hit of your homegrown resin. What I love. Legally recreationally grown resin. What I love is how you've put in the connoisseurship twist onto your medicine regimen. You know, I mean, it's, you could be treating it just like a medicine, but no, here you, you're, you're having fun with this. You're having a good time with it. Yeah. You know? Um, for me, cannabis is like my breakfast at Tiffany's with myself. Like, I don't know. Um, rather than having to be that with like any um, other person. I think sure. that that's really important. So um, yeah, having fun with it, having a, an experience that's really good um, is really important. Um, I'm into herbalism and I feel like cannabis is a really important part of that. Like you might have a cup of chamomile tea and smoke a joint of some really relaxing indica or something like that in the evening, just like this. Sure. Or maybe you need a dab because you need a different effect. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the the ghost OG lime pop uh, in a joint usually does it for me. I bet. Um, yeah. But this was super special. Thanks so much for bringing it in, Allie. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Uh, I had a great time here Yay. today. Um, was there any more of this rosin left? Did we, did yeah, we there's smoke a little bit more. There is a little bit more? Yeah. I'll tell you what. Uh, I'm gonna say goodbye. Yeah. All right, and maybe we could, uh, we could smoke uh, just one more hit of this each. Sounds great. Is that cool? Yeah, sounds great. Thanks everybody for joining us. Hope you had a good time today on High Rollers. Uh, I know Allie and I did. Yes. And uh, <laughs> yeah, we're gonna probably have another hit here and uh, hope you guys will join us next time. See ya. Thank you. Good times, Allie. Yeah, definitely. Hey, that was fun. Yeah, that was awesome. No, and I'm serious now. That was really, really tasty. Dude, it's really um, good. Yeah, if there, if, is there any more Yeah, there's here? totally more. Let me give you another one. Because yeah. I, I wanted to give you a teeny one. Yeah.